past the investigation part. Like, the sad part is, we're probably not gonna get full of full of the fruit. Full of the fruit. Blah, blah, blah. I'm sorry. That whole section took away my ability to speak. I wonder. I wonder if we can speed run the trial. February 24th, 9.41 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. So what do you think, Mr. Wright? I think the prosecution is as confused as we are. After all, the victim was murdered in two different places at the same time. And a different suspect was arrested at each of the crime scenes. Lana! Good morning, Mr. Wright. I apologize for yesterday. I was indisposed. I hope they didn't hold you for too long for questioning. We just finished, actually. I'm used to all-nighters, though. How, so, how'd it go? It says, Mr. Wright suspects the police are clueless. I figured as much, so I stuck... So I struck a plea bargain. A plea bargain? What do you mean by that? We agreed that if I told them the truth behind the simultaneous murders, they wouldn't seek capital punishment. That's what I mean, Adam. But Lana, don't tell me you... Much to my regret, I'm as much in a dark, the dark about this as you are. Miss Sky, hmm? Found trace evidence of a certain person in the police department's evidence room. They belong to Officer Marshall. What kind of trace evidence? What's the fingerprints to be exact? That's the trump card I have up my sleeve today. You understand what this means, don't you? In order to defend my sister, you're gonna have to accuse Mr. Marshall. We have to play the cards we're dealt. Isn't that right, Miss Sky? Do what you have to do, Mr. Wright. Currently 24, 10 a.m. District Court. Courtroom number nine. Court is now in session for the trial of Ms. Lana Sky. Defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is... Hmm? Hmm? I'm afraid you'll have to clarify. It takes 30 minutes by car to reach the police station for the prosecutor's office. Yet the victim, Bruce Goodman, was slain at both places at the same time. But that's not physically possible, is it? What's more, I hear the victim from the evidence room just disappeared. Yes, and the body eventually reappeared in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car. Wow, this is one messed up trial. One of my duties as prosecutor is to present impar impartial evidence. Today I will present evidence related to the murder at the police department. In doing so, I believe the way in which we should proceed will will reveal itself. Now that's what sets Mr. Edgeworth apart. He sounds so on top of things, even though he doesn't know what's going on himself. And that's supposed to be an admirable trait? Yo, it's called confidently incorrect. Very well, let the trial resume. On the day of the crime, what exactly transpired at the police department? Which is something I did not like about my ex-girlfriend. You, Mr. Edgeworth, you may call your first witness to the stand. For its first witness, the prosecution calls the suspect of the murder that occurred at the police department. The suspect? You mean the so-called murderer? Oh boy, things are getting wild for the gecko. Will the witness state his name and occupation? Yes, sir. I'm Officer Mike Meekin, sir. My occupation is, um, that I will be the murderer, sir. So you're telling us you're a professional killer. 
Sir, it was me, sir. I'm the one who did it. I'll never kill anyone again, sir. You got to believe me, sir. Um, actually, what we'd like to hear, sir. What I would call a young generation, part of the young generation, sir. A person whose actions adults can't possibly comprehend. Please, Mr. Edgeworth, sir, help me, sir. Officer Meekins. Yes, sir. Give us your report of the crime. Consider that in order. Yes, sir, as you wish. After all, I am part of a generation that must be told what to do, sir. I can't fault him for a lack of enthusiasm. And this would unfortunately lead the divide between Boomers and Generation X. Although it's not my normal duty, I was assigned to guard the evidence room that day. I spotted a suspicious man on the security screen and rushed into the room. I was only doing what I was trained to do, sir. I was suddenly attacked. I fought for my life and then I did it. After that, I passed out until another officer smacked me awake. Hmm. So the victim, Detective Goodman, attacked you? Do unto others before they do unto you. That's the Meekins family motto, sir. I see. Then you fainted and a colleague helped you regain consciousness. Yes, sir. He knocked me upside the head, sir. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. All I need here is more info to work with. Although it's not my normal duty, I was assigned to the evidence room that day. Press. Mr. Meekins, you work in the General Affairs Department, do you not? Yes, sir. I was in charge of hiring new recruits, sir. Yikes. Now there's a scary thought. Evidence transfer was taking place on the day of the crime, which meant many officers were given special tasks not ordinarily performed. I was in charge of guarding the Blue Badger, sir. The Blue Badger? Yes, sir. The love police mascot created by Chief of Detectives, sir. I was to ensure it wasn't broken during the transfer process. That was my sole mission for the day, sir. I see. Sounds like a very uh, important mission. After the award ceremony finished that day, there were so many people running around. I, re I relocated the Blue Badger to the evidence room. Oh. So that's why you went to the evidence room? Tell us, what did you see when you got there? I saw spotted a suspicious man on the security screen and rushed into the room. In order to enter the evidence room, you need an ID card, am I correct? Precisely, sir. I have one right here around my neck. So then, your ID should be on this list right here. There it is, I found it! This is the one right here. Could you please read us the number? Yes, sir. It's 49895596. That's my number, sir. I see. Uh, but the number 498959 shows as being used twice. Please explain, witness. It's no real mystery, sir. The first time is when I relocated the blue badger to the evidence room. Second time is when I was going to get him after everything settled down. I see. So it was during that second time when... Yes, sir. That was when I spotted the man on the security screen. I was the only... I was the only one... So you were attacked. Can you please tell us exactly what happened to you? 
What was the knife, sir? A knife! Detective Goodman pulled a knife on you? What happened then? Well, with me charging in on him. Well, with me charging in on him like that, he looked as surprised as I was. You aren't exactly the kind of person someone who would want to run into. That's when I reacted, sir. I swung my arms like an octopus, struggling to detain him. That's how I got this gash on my hand. Maybe if you just kept your cool, your hand wouldn't be. When I saw the blood trickling down my arm, I panicked. I grabbed the man by the collar. What exactly do you mean when you say did it? I know I don't look the type, but I really, I'm really into kung fu films, sir. The man let his guard down for just an instant, so I snatched his knife from him. You took his knife? I spun him around and performed a disarming maneuver. I made sure to close my eyes like a man. I see. He must have been desperate. Next thing I knew, his white coat was drenched in a sea of blood. And then, next thing I knew, yes, he punched me right in my face, sir. After that, I passed out until the other... Who's the other officer? About what time did you regain consciousness? No offense, sir, but how am I supposed to know that? I was unconscious. Oh, right. According to the report from the officer that woke up the witness, it was around 5.30. He hit me right in the head, too. I woke up crying. Tears of pain. That's nice. I mean, it's nice that you're covered, that is. When I came around, though, I made sure to finish my mission, sir. Your mission? Yes, sir. The Blue Badger, sir. I returned him to the entrance before things got out of hand. Well, we can all rest easy now. I believe we now have a fairly accurate picture of what happened. Yes, your honor. Only one thing remains unclear. Was the man this officer murdered really the victim? He's really got a point. Um, yes, Officer Meekins. With regards to that, sir. Take a look at this. It was to send. It was sent to my jail cell. Chief Grant delivered it to me this morning, sir. The chief delivered it. What is it? A videotape? Yes, sir. That's absolutely right, sir. A videotape, sir. It contains footage. Sorry, I had to send a quick message. It contains footage from the security camera in the evidence room. Objection! What? But I specifically asked if there was such a tape. 
and I was told it had been mistakenly erased. That's quite a mistake. I just do what I'm told, sir. It's the only thing I'm really good at. Looks like the communication with the police department is... is as good as ever. Well then, let's have a look. Show us the video of you murdering the victim. Oh, please stop using the word murderer, sir. It scares me. A video of a real murder? Just what are we getting ourselves into? Well, I believe we're all thinking the same thing. How can we deal with these unsettling feelings stirred within us? What the hell was that wiggling piece of plywood? Sir, that was the pride and joy of, this, of the entire criminal affairs department, sir. It was the blue badger, sir. Why am I not surprised this was... This isn't going smoothly. Ah, uh, yes, well, anyway, this tape seems to prove that the witness did indeed encounter uh, someone in the evidence room and some sort of... Your Honor, instead of relying on clearly incomplete footage, the witness's testimony will suffice. This? Is that alright with you, Officer Meekins? Yes, sir, as you wish, sir! Who is the mystery man? This face can't be seen clearly in the photo, I mean in the video. But there's no question that the other person was Dick Goodman, sir. I mean, he opened the locker, which requires Detective Goodman's fingerprints to do. The locker was open. Is unquestionably Detective Goodman's locker, sir. So, it must be him. No one else could have unlocked it. What's this about fingerprints? Each detective has been given a locker, equipped with a fingerprint activated lock. These locks ensure that each locker can only be opened by the detective it belongs to. Intriguing. That would mean the victim at the crime scene would have have been Detective Goodman. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. I don't know where this cross-examination will lead, but everything begins with the con contradiction. That's where I have to start. Let's see, but here's the thing. Do we know it's actually him? However, 
The most important detail is not shown in this video. The man's face. Sir! If I may say something, sir! Please do. After all, you are the one being examined. I don't understand why the man's face is so important in this case, sir. I mean, it was his hand that opened the fingerprint lock. And it was his hand that tried to thrust his knife into my body, sir. My unsettled state can testify enough to this, sir. Yes, you have a point. The footage doesn't lie. That is... Unless the defense can find a problem with it. Mr. Wright, let's check the court record again. Is there a problem with the security footage? Yeah, there's a problem. There's one thing in particular that seems rather strange. Strange? This contradiction leads to the po to possibly that. The man may not have been Detective Goodman. What? This video contains a contradiction? Objection! Interesting, Your Honor. I have a proposal. Yes, Mr. Edgeworth? I propose we have the defense point out to this alleged contradiction in the video. You would want me to point it out? Very well. Proposal accepted. Let us further inspect this piece of evidence. I will now play the security tape. Mr. Wright, please show us the contradiction you speak of. I have to point out a problem in the video. This is the first time I've ever had to do that. You can do it, Mr. Wright. It's set up so you can fast forward, rewind, or pause. Just take a good look and be sure to point out the right thing. Please don't play the... Play it too many times. I can't stand watching this video. How did this guy be ever become a police officer? Now then, Mr. Wright, please enlighten us. Where is the contradiction that indicates... Wait. What? The thing is... Strange video would be, uh, this. Wait a second. I need eye drops. Well, I don't get it. Uh, would you mind if I borrow your eye medication? Don't look at me with those blurry eyes. Before your eyes get too teary, perhaps you should think spot again. What should I do? Play the video again. Locker, or is that Goodman's Locker? I think that's Goodman's Locker. The thing is that strange about this video would have to be, uh, this. Thing is, strings has to be Officer Meekins. Sir, do you mean me, sir? As I understand, the locker appears. The locker's apparatus works like this. When you grab the handle, a sensor reads your fingerprint. If it matches, the light turns on and the lock is released. 
According to my very limited experience, that's the way I understand it, sir. So, then something is seriously wrong with this picture. Music is really creepy. When the victim reaches for the handle to open the locker, let's rewind it to a little earlier. I was already on. Here, notice the light. What's this? It's it's already lit. Precisely my point, Your Honor. The locker was already open before the victim grabbed the handle. Ah! Oh. Order, order. What's the meaning of this? It's very simple, Your Honor. The locker wasn't opened on the day of the crime. But the lockers are controlled by an electronic system. When a door is shut, a sensor is triggered and the locker is automatically locked. Oh, I know. It must have broken down. Of course, I'm not an expert in this. That's not likely, Your Honor. The sensor would detect and report any malfunctions. Oh well, it goes to show novices should keep their mouths shut. So then, Mr. Wright, do you have an explanation? Me, Your Honor? Yes. Why was the locker locked? Me, Your Honor? Yes, well, you see... This is exactly my field. What do you think, Miss Scientific Investigator? Huh? Oh, um... Maybe something like jammed the system sensors? Something jammed? The system sensors say... There was something else seemed to have place in the video? Yeah, I thought so too. There's gotta be another clue somewhere in this footage. Very well, let's inspect the video once more. Please watch closely. This is the con continuation of the part I showed you earlier. Something white fell out of the locker. But sir, it's been my experience that things fall out when doors are opened. I often fall out and roll. Can't be sure. That item was completely inside the locker to begin with. What do you mean? The sensor triggered the lock when the door is shut. What if something was inserted, say, between the sensors and the door? Inserted? This white thing wasn't inside the locker. It was stuck between the door and the sensor. Oh, I understand now, sir. Just like my tie. Two out of three times, I get... It's, it gets stuck in the door when I get 
out of my patrol vehicle, sir. Instead of the door closing, my child. But the object would have to be extremely thin to fit in the door. Not only that, it would also have to block electrical currents. It would need to be an insulator. Ah, uh, yes, an insulator. But at the scene of the crime, there's. There just might have been something that fits that description. But sir, an insulator, don't you? I think I finally got this figured out. Very well, will the defense please present the relevant evidence? What was this insulator that was stuck in the door? The glove. I found this near a locker. A thin rubber glove. But... We can't be sure that it was the victim's locker. It was a tag that says SL9 incident. The video show the video seems to depict the victim opening the locker. But that wasn't the case. The lit lamp attests to this. On the day of the crime, even I could have opened the locker. Is this not so, Officer Meekins? Sir! Oh, here, so, sir! Order, order, order. So, are we to believe then that the victim, whom this witness sat in evidence room, was not Detective Goodman? You do not be misled, Your Honor. What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? The defense has merely dem demonstrated that possibility and nothing more. The victim in the video was indeed Bruce Goodman. The prosecution will offer one more testimony to prove this. What? Officer Meekins, please testify to this. Yeah, sir. Me, sir? I'm not sure if you're referring to me, sir. Oh, that means me. Oh, you mean that, sir? Of course, sir. Is this a joke? Very well, begin your testimony. Mystery man, round two. There's no one other thing that proves that man was Detective Goodman, sir. To enter the evidence room, one must use their ID card. When an ID card is used, there's a record of it. At the time of the crime, the detective had used his car. An ID card record, I see. I have the ID record right here, Your Honor. The ID used at 514 is that of the victim. Just before the crime, hmm. Yes, without a doubt, this is the victim's ID. However, one thing does strike me as unusual. Several hundred cases should have been due for transferal. Why were there so few people using this room? This particular evidence room is only used for strong certain special cases. Special cases? Extremely violent cases involving police staff. Just hearing that makes my hair stand on edge. Me too, although it doesn't make much of a difference. There were only a few cases up for transferal there and most were cleared up by noon. Right, I see. Now, let's move on to cross-examination. Hmm. He would need an ID card to get in, like, I don't know, say this? Wait one moment, Officer Meekins. I'm not good at waiting, sir. I have the victim's ID card right here. I found it at the crime scene. That makes sense. When I say the crime scene, I'm not referring to the evidence room at the police department. I mean the other crime scene. The underground parking lot at the prosecutor's office. Your Honor, I have one more piece of evidence to present. It's a very important clue regarding 
The victim's ID card. A lost item report. It's only half complete. But it shows that Detective Goodman had lost something on the day of the crime. Something important enough to fill out this report. Let me guess. Do you believe this something to be his ID card, right? I can't say for sure, but there is a high probability. On the day of the crime, Detective Goodman was not carrying his car. Order, order, so now what does that all mean? It can only mean one thing. It doesn't even require much thought. The man Officer Meekins encountered in the evidence room was not Detective Goodman, but rather the man who stole his ID card. Order, order, does the prosecution have a response? I have one thing to say to the defense. Bravo, Mr. Wright. Bravo. Allow me to summarize the defense's argument. At 5.15 on the day of the crime, the man in the evidence room Officer Meekins encountered was not Detective Goodman. There are two grounds to support this. First, the locker in the evidence room was already unlocked. Second, the victim lost his ID card. Am I correct so far, Mr. Wright? Yes. What's he up to? That being the case, we must inevitably arrive to a single conclusion. If the victim in this video is fake, then the murder in the evidence room is also fake. In other words, the security camera does not show the instance of the murder. Uh, that is, uh, well, I guess that's right. Is something wrong, Mr. Wright? Only moments ago, you seemed content to point your finger around. This isn't going to end well. Well, well, well. It seems you finally realize exactly what you've gone to such lengths to prove. Explain yourself, Mr. Edgeworth. The defense has already done the explaining for me. The victim in this photo video is fake, which means a murder did not take place at the police department at 5.15 on the day of the crime. So, so the real crime could only take place at one location, the underground parking lot, at the prosecution, prosecutor's office, the murderer being Miss Lana Sky, the defendant. The evidence is compelling. I tr a trustworthy witness. Observe the moment the defendant used the murder weapon. Ugh. <laughs> I knew that testimony was way too shabby. It was all a trap from the beginning. The activity in the evidence room still leaves many unanswered questions. Who exactly was the victim Officer Meekins encountered? And where did this person disappear to? However, the trial's purpose is to examine only the murder of Detective Goodman. Just so, Your Honor. Mr. Wright. You have to do something or else Lana... What do I do? How am I supposed to get myself out of this mess? Object. Objection! One moment, Your Honor. What now, Mr. Wright? Don't tell me you're objecting to what you've just proven. Of course not. But I also walked right into the prosecution's trap. What are you talking about? This cross-examination has proven one thing and one thing only. The security video did not show the actual murder. We're waiting. However, it cannot be said that it is unrelated to the murder in the parking lot. 
Specifically, large amounts of blood traces were found in the evidence room. The defense demands further examination into the truth of the matter. Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor. If the court were to examine this further, other witnesses will be necessary. Is the prosecution prepared? I'm sorry, Your Honor. The prosecution considered the incident at the police station to be unrelated. We have not prepared any other witnesses for this incident. This just might be my chance. Time to call a certain Texas Ranger to the stand. Mr. Wright, do you mean, Your Honor? The defense would like to request a specific witness. Oh, who do you have in mind? Someone we have reason to believe knows the truth. The truth behind the activities that took place in the evidence room. The prosecution requests to hear this person's name before deciding whether or not to comply. Very well then, Mr. Wright. This person whom you would like to te have testify, what is his or her name? Officer Jake Marshall. Why him? I can't let Edgeworth know everything just yet. He's in charge of evident of the evidence room. I feel we should hear what he has to say. The prosecution agrees to the defense's request. Since he was responsible for guarding the room, we should hear his testimony. Unfortunately, he works in the police department. We should know we shouldn't need longer than 20 minutes to prepare. Very well. The court will take a 30 minute recess while the witness is subpoenaed. Sounds sexual. Will the prosecution please prepare the witness during this time? We will, Your Honor. Court is now in recess. February 24th, 11.32 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. There's no stopping you, is there, Mr. Wright? Huh? What do you mean? You called for Jake Marshall. It seems you figured everything out. Uh, I haven't figured out anything. Lana. You're the one who knows everything. Emma. You always know everything. Why don't you just tell us? Mr. Wright is trying his hardest to protect you. I... I don't recall ever asking for his protection. How can you be so cold? Don't you trust us? Don't you trust... me? I hope I'm not interrupting anything, pals. Oh, uh, I guess I am. I'll come back later. Wait, Detective Gumshoe, what is it? You got a lot of nerve, pal, making a detective run all the way, all around while on duty. And on top of that, call me here. I've seen happier people in funerals. Sorry, detective. You better be, pal. Hey, 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 hey! I didn't see you there, Chief Prosecutor Sky. It's okay, so have you brought what I asked? Oh, 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 You mean this right? My apologies, Detective. Due to my present circumstances, I was forced to use Mr. Wright's name when making my request. My name? Never in a million years would I thought it was you who asked me. Could I bother you? Bother you to bring me the SL9 incident files? I'll need them by noon. Talk about crazy. The SL9 incident? But Lana, that's... I thought Mr. Wright might need them, so I had them brought here. Here, you might do well... do well read them. I can't believe you, the chief prosecutor, were a witness in this... in that case. Miss Skye was a witness? Take it from me, you don't want anything to do with the serial murderer. Oh wait. Now I've brought you your stuff, you're gonna... Uh, just gonna ignore me? Emma? But why? Why is your name in here? 
What? My name? I don't know, unless... No, it couldn't be Lana. This SL9 incident, is that... That's the classification number. The police filed it under. Two years ago, the rest of the world knew it as... Joe Dark Killings. The Joe Dark? No, Lana. That's over, no! Emma, wait, she ran away. Uh, you know what? I just remembered I gotta be somewhere. Sorry, pal, but I'm out of here. Jake Marshall, Angel Star, Damien Graham, Miles Edward. Not to mention Lana and Emma. Everyone involved in this case is connected to those films two years ago. This can't be just a coincidence. Knowing you, you just might be able to figure it out. Time to get back to the trial, Mr. Wright. Best of luck. I better take a good look at these files. Alright. And that's where we're going to end it. Yeah, I'll see you all tomorrow. Rest easy. Stay cheesy. Hopefully we'll get through this case tomorrow without much tribulation. Peace out, Alex.